Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Craig. And I'm Brittany. And today we're going to be talking about the number one symptom following your COVID vaccine, no matter which of the three variations that you took. We've had lots of questions from patients over the last few weeks for people that have had their vaccinations. And we're going to address some of those questions today. But before we get into any of that, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell so that you never miss a notification when we upload a new video. Click that bell. <laughs> number one question we've had over the last few weeks from patients that have received their vaccination is soreness normal after receiving an injection? So I actually had soreness after both my vaccine doses. Uh, the first one, not so bad, but or the first one was actually much worse. The second one was not so bad. And did you have soreness after yours? I had no soreness after my injections. Okay, well, Craig's a superhero and out of the norm, but definitely a lot of people that complained of that soreness. And with the first dose of my vaccine, I didn't do anything after. I got the shot and you almost feel like your arm's kind of out of service. So I babied my arm, I kept it close to my body, didn't incorporate a lot of movement, didn't really follow up with any specific hydration. And then I got to learn from my second injection. And with that one, right after I did windmills, I kind of got my arm moving around. So just getting the arm to go all the way up and around, making big circles. I did about 10 of those right after I got the injection. And then every one to two hours after that, I followed up and I kept doing 10 repetitions just to get some blood flow into the area. And tell us a little bit about why that helps. Well, getting blood flow into the area always helps the muscle hydrate, helps the soreness dissipate, allows the fluid to move in and out of the tissue. And in my case, I took a couple of Advil as recommended by some friends uh, that had the experience beforehand. Took a couple of Advil and I drank lots of water. So I hydrated quite a bit afterwards and then I carried on my normal days. I had a normal workout. I did back off a little bit um, in case uh, I felt some soreness or any repercussions from the, from the vaccination. But overall, I felt very good. I was able to continue my daily uh, activities. So I felt pretty good. Yeah, and if you think about when you get the injection, it's going right into that deltoid muscle. So if you don't do anything and you don't move around, then wherever that injection site is, the inflammatory response that naturally has to happen after you get a vaccine injection is all gonna be concentrated in one area. If you do things like move your arm around or Craig just went back to his normal day of work, then you're naturally getting some more movement throughout the body. So that's gonna help to spread that vaccine around so it's not concentrated into one area. And keep in mind, an injection is a trauma. Right? We're inserting a needle into that deltoid muscle, directly into the muscle. It's going to create some bleeding. It's going to create some swelling. It's going to create a response from the body as if it's received a trauma. And you might have some redness. You might be a little tender in that area. And all of that stuff is totally normal following the vaccine. Usually for most people, it lasts about one to two days. If it lasts any longer than that, then you might want to look into that. And another question that we've been getting is, should you work out directly after you got your vaccine? So I did, I had a, a normal workout that day, not right after the vaccine, I actually went back to work and uh, carried on throughout my day and I worked out that evening. I didn't have any repercussions. I did take into consideration that when you have a vaccine, you are introducing pieces of the, um, of the virus into your system. So I didn't wanna work out too much. I did a normal workout that was pulled back just a little bit. I had no ill effects. However, we have had patients that have said that had some ill effects to the vaccine, don't work out. If you are having any adverse uh, effects, don't do it. And some of those reactions that you might be looking for are like flu-like symptoms. If you're feeling feverish, if you're feeling run down, like more tired than usual, all those things are kind of signs that your body's really trying to fight with that vaccine or work with that vaccine, not fight. Um, and those are signs that your body needs to take that extra rest. And that's what a vaccine is all about. We're introducing pieces and parts of the vaccine into our body so that our immune system can know what it is that it needs to fight. Right. A question from Cheryl. She wants to know if we can drink alcohol after receiving the vaccination. Okay, so we can never recommend whether or uh, promote drinking. And anything that is alcoholic, if it's beer, wine, hard liquor, any of those things are gonna dehydrate the body. So after you get a vaccine, whether it's your flu vaccine, your COVID vaccine, you wanna make sure to stay hydrated. Um, if you did have a glass of wine, you would make sure that you wanna also drink ample water, but hydration is the biggest key following your vaccine. So it's not wrong to drink alcohol, but if you were gonna hold off on one night, probably the night of vaccine would be the way to go. So another question that we got is, what kind of symptoms did we experience personally after getting the vaccine? And I know that I myself, I told you about the arm soreness, but I also had an episode, it was very short thankfully, but I had about a 10 minute episode of really intense chills. Um, I had the heat seater on in my car. I got under all the blankets when I got home. Thought that I was gonna feel much worse the next day because I had heard stories from other people feeling bad for a day or two after. But after 10 minutes, 
pretty good. I woke up the next day feeling a little more tired than usual, but nothing out of the ordinary. And honestly, thank goodness, I had no symptoms at all. Um, I felt great, I had no problems, um, maybe a little soreness at the injection site, but outside of that, like I said, I had worked out, I had uh, hydrated pretty well, and had no problems um, with my experience of having a vaccination. And so, good experience for myself. But we do, are, we're hearing so much more in the, in the news nowadays and, and, and from patients that are walking the door now. What are some of the other things that we're hearing about uh, receiving these vaccinations or people that have had COVID-19? Um, we've heard things like um, muscle soreness and weakness over a long period of time. We've heard uh, the term long haulers. Have you heard anything about that? I have, and I've also had patients come in that have just general cardiorespiratory, like noticing a difference, not that they can't breathe or they are having like chest pain or anything like that, but something along the lines of not, something along the lines of not feeling normal. So I have runners that when they're getting back to running, they're noticing that's taking them a lot longer to get back to their normal training volume, just because they're feeling so out of breath. And that for some people has lasted at least a month is what I've heard. And you know, we had a very interesting situation in our clinic today. A, a young gentleman came in today. He received a, a vaccination, I believe it was a week or two weeks ago, and he's experienced uh, severe, moderate to severe discomfort in the arm, along with weakness to the point where he's having a lot of difficulty using the arm. Thankfully, after his first session today, it felt a lot better. We'll follow up with him. But we're starting to see some of these, what we're calling long haulers, come back into the office. We're seeing shortness of breath going upstairs in some of our older population. We're seeing, uh, as Brittany just pointed out, some of our athletes taking a little bit of extra time to get back to their prior level of function. So these are things that are a bit out of the ordinary and we have been able to address them here and help them out a bit. So if this is you, give us a call. Make sure you clear it with your physician first. Make sure there's nothing emergent going on. But give us a call. Maybe we can help you out. And one more question for you all today. What are some of the home remedies that you can do to help alleviate some of the symptoms you might be feeling? So I would just try to incorporate some gentle movement. Like we talked about moving the arm, the more just general things that you can do around your house, getting back to your normal routine, the more movement, the better. You also wanna try as you're weaning back into your regular athletic activity, whether going for a run and you're a 10 mile runner or an around the block walker, you want to start on the easier side so start with the quarter block first start with the three mile whichever can kind of break it down so you can make sure that after you finish that short bout of exercise or that short return to activity that you still feel good enough to continue you don't want to go if you're 10 miles you're normal go for a five mile run out and then realize that you can't make it that five miles back so start to gradually progress into your normal routine and know that you did just go through something your body went through trauma every injection is trauma every vaccine causes trauma to the body it's directly going into the muscle so give yourself some time. Don't get too frustrated with that return back to normal activity because it does take time. Something else you might be able to do is you can apply some ice, right? We can do some gentle massage to the shoulder area just to allow some of the tissue to, uh, to soften up with a little bit of easy massage. Again, what Brittany was saying, it's gentle, easy movements. And not only is there physical trauma from the injection itself, remember with all the stuff going on around us, there's so much information invading our space it's an emotional trauma. There's a lot of unknowns happening here. People are scared, people are fearful. So um, first advice, turn off your news, uh, listen to your body. And if you notice anything strange going on with your body, please contact your physician right away. Make sure there's no emergent situation going on. But outside of that, you can use us as a reference. We'll be here to help you out. And if there's any other questions that you guys have musculoskeletal uh, about the COVID vaccine and following up on how to return to activity, make sure to drop them in the comments below because we're here to help. And don't forget to please subscribe to the IPT channel and push that, that uh, bell. Yeah, the bell. Make, the push that bell to make sure that you get <laughs> notifications. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brittany and Craig, and introduce yourself. Go. Hey, everybody, how's it going? I'm Brittany. And I'm Craig. And we're physical therapists. Are we going to say? No, we're not. Okay. Hey, everybody, I'm Craig. And I'm Brittany. And you're supposed to say, and today we're talking <laughs> about.